Hey fellow tankers, it's Mobius Y here with another edition of Tank Talk, and this video is covering the Tier 8 French light tank, the AMX 1390. A ridiculously good scout tank for this game's meta right now, as well as just a really fun tank to play. Now the main reason I went back and repurchased this tank to play it is because when the other French mediums, the AMX 30s, come out, uh, they branch directly off of the AMX 1390 for a Tier 9 and Tier 10 French medium tank. And you need about 200,000 XP on the AMX 1390 to get the AMX 30 prototype, which is the tier 9 uh, non-auto loading French medium tank. So I went back, I bought the 1390, and some friends who would be grinding tiers 8 or 9 or just wanted to play tier 10s, I would just bust out the 1390 and I started accumulating uh, XP on it so that I had enough to research the AMX 30 1ER prototype, which is a tier 9 French medium tank. But, honestly, this tank very well might stay in my garage because it's just so fun to play. It has the natural aspects of playing a scout tank where you can have a really good game, you can have a game where you were just utterly useless due to the circumstances, or you can have a game very much like this where you literally do nothing because you get blown up in the first minute of the game. It's just the dangers of playing a light tank. Sometimes it can be really frustrating uh, because, you know, you can do everything possible. Everything goes right for you in a game, but, uh, you know, maybe your team just doesn't come through for you or, or whatnot. Or in a situation like this, a, a lucky-ass artillery shot just winds up getting you eviscerated 40, 50 seconds into the game. And that's it for that's it for your game right there. So that can definitely happen. It can be frustrating to play a light tank naturally, but you know, uh the enjoyments of playing a light tank if if you like if you like speed, uh if you like, you know, being a being an asset for your team, if you like sometimes being the unsung hero for your team, that kind of stuff, and then maybe light tanks are kind of more your thing, especially in the higher tiers. Uh, light tanks can definitely be difficult to play uh, due to the fact that uh, in tiers 9 and 10 especially, just about every tank is sporting about 390 to 400 meters of view range, which is on par, sometimes better than your own uh, light tank's view range. So you have to rely on your camouflage rating, which is extremely high compared to other tanks, uh, to stay hidden from enemy view ranges and whatnot. And the thing about the 1390 is it mounts a 90 millimeter gun with a six shot clip. So essentially you have about 14, 1440 potential burst damage. That can severely cripple any tank at tiers eight and nine and even at tier 10. That's three quarters of the health of a tier 10 medium tank in just a few seconds there. So definitely a very dangerous tank to play as well. Um, really good camo combined with really good gun burst potential for sure so we'll take a peek here at the packages on the amx 1390 so stock you get the same 75 millimeter gun that you had on the 1375 and you have the stock engine which only grants you 250 horsepower so the first package upgrade gives you a better engine 280 horsepower so improving the power to weight ratio but you still have the 75 millimeter gun and you finally get the 90 millimeter gun on the second to last package sporting a 300 horsepower engine and a new 90 millimeter gun uh, with 240 alpha instead of uh, 115 I believe it is on the 75 or 110 and the last package gives you the final engine upgrade 350 horsepower really good power to weight ratio right there and you're still sporting the 90 millimeter gun now the stats on the 90 millimeter gun uh, they're not that great in and of themselves aside from really good burst potential for such a small speedy tank the rate of fire is rated at uh, 6.17 rounds per minute. Uh, you can complete a full reload in about 40 seconds, but the interclip reload, which is the reload between firing your next shot, is about 3 seconds. So it, it can take upwards of about uh, 15 seconds to completely unload your clip from the time you fire your first shot to the time you fire your last shot. So that's about a 55 second kind of uh, timer right there. Uh, 
uh, between when you start a full reload and you fire your first shot immediately. So about six rounds a minute is about correct. Uh, the average penetration on the AP rounds is only 170, quite low. So if you decide to actually attack an enemy tank, you need to get behind them or in their really weak side armor, and you have to know which tanks have weak sides and rear armor for that. The average alpha per shot, 240. The aim time is really bad on this gun at 3 seconds, and the overall accuracy is 0 0.37, so not very great. So if you want to attack a tank, you want to get in nice and tight, get in really close, get in right behind them, and just dump their butt end full of some 90 millimeter shells. The view range on the AMX 1390 is 400 meters on par with a lot of tier 9s and tier 10s, but the AMX 1390 has one of the best camo ratings in the game, especially at this tier, so you can really abuse that to play vision games with much larger tanks. Now the equipment that I would go with on the AMX 1390, coated optics and improved ventilation to maximize the view range, and a camouflage net in case I decide to park somewhere behind a bush and just initially start spotting people. Uh, the camo net is entirely uh, pr preference. You could totally change it or you could even change the optics and the vents for something such as a gun laying drive to try and improve on that bad aim time. Uh, the gun laying drive can definitely help with that, but this tank cannot mount vertical stabilizers and personally my mentality is that this thing is a scout first, so I normally just stuck with uh, camo net and uh, optics and vents to maximize the view range. You could also mount binocular telescope to combine with a camouflage net or in spite of a camouflage net if you so choose to mount optics and binox. Uh, for the supplies, I went with uh, five drums of AP rounds, one drum of armor piercing ammunition, which has really good pen, no high explosive, not really worth it in my opinion, and consumables, very basic, small repair, small first aid, and an automatic fire extinguisher. The automatic fire extinguisher uh, could be changed for strong coffee to really maximize your view range and decrease the speed of reloading your six-shot drum. Uh, however, I don't recommend it if you do not have the crew skills and perks trained on your crew for that, such as preventative maintenance and firefighting. Now, for the skills that I went with, I trained this crew on the FCM 50 ton before I moved it to the 1390. So I started with Mentor, and I went from there in the FCM 50 ton. Then I went to Brothers in Arms to stack with Mentor, as well as just give an overall improvement to the crew. And that was with the FCM 50 ton, so right after that I started with repairs to really, really get those tracks repairing quickly. You need this for your light tanks as well to get your tracks repairing as quickly as possible. Six cents is a must on all light tanks. If you're behind a bush, you need to know when you're spotted so that you can duck behind hard cover. Camouflage, very important for light tanks as well, especially the 1390. You need to try and stay hidden as much as possible, especially from tanks that are bigger than you with much bigger guns. And clutch braking will definitely help this thing with taking corners. It can really take off and go fast in a straight line, but it doesn't turn very well, especially at the higher speed. So clutch braking will help with that. Some other skills you might want to try. Firefighting, if you don't mount a fire extinguisher, definitely. Uh, definitely recommend it if you don't mount an automatic fire extinguisher. Although I do suggest a fire extinguisher for equipment. Uh, green thumb is definitely a good choice for a scout tank. It'll really increase your camouflage rating when you're hiding behind a bush especially combined with a camouflage net. Uh, some other ones you might want to consider preventative maintenance. If you Again, if you don't mount a fire extinguisher, help pr reduce the chance of engine fires, as the engine is very large on this tank and it takes up much of the front of the hull. Uh, silent driving might not be a bad choice, track mechanic, but if you want to improve the gun handling, snapshot and smooth ride for sure uh, to improve the really poor gun handling on this tank. Uh, you could even go with recon to increase your view range a little bit as well as situational awareness to again increase your view range and really help you win those vision wars against tanks that are bigger than you have bigger guns than you and will be trying to spot you as well so we're going to take a quick peek at the armor modules on tanks.gg and the soft, soft stats as well so looking at tanks.gg in the armor module, there, there's really not much to look for here. The thickest plating on the 1390 is 50 millimeters and 40 millimeters in the upper plate and the turret. So there's really nothing to say here. The most effective you'll get is 60 millimeters of armor at a weird angle. So there's nothing to show for here. You're not going to bounce anything in this tank except for an auto bounce. So, I mean, if you get shot in this thing, you're going to take damage and that's how it goes. So you got to do, do your best to not get shot by either staying hidden or using cover. 
Fully upgraded to 13.9, it gets 1,100 hit points. Quite a bit of health for a scout tank. And the weight of this tank is about 15 tons. It's a really light tank, so that's why it has such a good power to weight ratio, but you probably don't want to ram anything with the AMX 1390 either. 350 horsepower with a top engine uh, in a 15 ton, 14 ton tank, and that's why you have almost a 24 horsepower per ton, per, horsepower per ton, excuse me, power to weight ratio, which really lends this thing's great top speed of 64 kilometers an hour, as well as pretty dang good acceleration. Uh, some of the stop stats to look at here, um, as well as the gun constraints. Uh, the the gun itself has six degrees of gun depression all the way around, uh, all the way around the tank. However, in the front, you have 13 degrees of gun elevation, which is pointing upwards. But uh, once the gun starts swinging around to the sides, you're down to about 7 degrees of gun elevation. So you'll find that uh, on some slopes, you'll have trouble hitting your targets, especially if you have to get, aim your gun upwards and you're aiming off to the side. But apart from that, uh, about 1,600 DPM uh, on this tank. Not very much, but again, 1,440 uh potential burst damage with a single drum which isn't that bad at whatsoever and you can definitely decrease these reload speeds about 40 second reload reduced by a second with vents reduced by about another second just with brothers in arms you're looking at a 38 and a half second reload time now as opposed to 40 seconds and if you really wanted to improve on that again you come out strong coffee take off about another second and a half you're looking at just under 37 seconds for a reload slightly higher dpm maybe an extra shot per minute uh, just with that reduced reload with vents, brothers in arms, and strong coffee. And you're also looking at a pretty high view range of 434 meters without optics. So not, not a bad improvement at all with, uh, with these, uh, statistics right here. And as I mentioned, the gun handling on this tank is really bad. Uh, so we're going to compare it with the RU251 Spy Panzer, which also has pretty bad gun handling, but much better gun handling than the AMX 1390. Uh, as you'll see here, moving uh, and tra traversing the tank, the RU251 has way better gun handling. Turret traverse, much better on the Spy Panzer, and after each shot, much better aiming in after shooting with the Spy Panzer. Um, various other statistics as well. The Spy Panzer does move faster with a better power-to-weight ratio, but that's not really important there. Just wanted to highlight how bad the gun handling is on the 1390, and that's why it's imperative that if you come up behind a tank to shoot them, you need to get right behind them in their rear or their side armor where it's really weak. So let's look at some of the soft stats on the 1390. We're going to go ahead and take a peek at uh, where the crew and the modules are in the tank. So looking at the front of the tank here, you can see the front of the tank. If you really want to cripple the 1390, shoot it somewhere in the front of the hull. You've got lots of engine underneath, uh, un beneath the tra between the tracks there, as well as the drivers on the left side of the tank. So if you're shooting anywhere in the front of the hull, there's a good chance you're going to cripple the mobility of an AMX 1390. So if possible, try and aim there on the 1390. You can see in the top view as well, the right side of the hull opposite the driver. Again, more engine deck there. So basically anywhere in the top portions of the hull on the right or left side or in the middle between the tracks, you'll really cripple the mobility of the AMX 1390 uh, by either knocking out the driver or damaging the engine. Looking at the left side of the tank, you can see the commander sitting underneath the commander's hatch, of course. You can really damage the turret by hitting it in the turret ring. And there is some ammo rack in the rear of the turret itself uh, with some fuel tanks in the very back of, of the hull behind the rear drive wheel on the tank so if you want to try an ammo rack or set this tank on fire try shooting it either in the rear of the turret or the rear of the hull although again i do recommend that if you try if you really want to cripple a light tank take out its mobility hit this thing into the driver of the engine in the front but you could ammo rack it or set it on fire by hitting it in the back of the hull or the back of the turret anywhere in those areas right there so looking on the right side of the tank from the back you can see that the gunner sits in the right side of the turret underneath the hatch right there opposite the commander and there's still more fuel tank in the back of the hull which is really easy to damage if you get shots in the back of this tank. So one more look on the right side of the AMX 1390 and you can see that on the right side again behind the tracks there's more engine deck there very easy to hit very easy to damage and absolutely cripple the mobility of this tank uh, lots of ammo rack and fuel tank areas in the back of the hull as well as the back of the turret. So lots of spots where you can shoot this thing and cripple it. And because, like I said, it has basically no armor. The thickest armor is 60 millimeters. 
uh, this thing is not going to bounce shots. So if you're close enough, you can pretty much just auto lock and pull the trigger and you'll, you'll probably damage it. So if you're in an AMX 1390, you need to make sure that you are not getting shot. Either use your vision war games to stay undetected or simply just, you know, be so fast and zip in behind a tank that's not paying attention. A tank that's occupied with either a teammate or a platoon mate so that you can swoop in behind or into its really weak side armor and, you know, do a good amount of damage with that 1440 potential burst damage with your six round clip. It does take a while to dump that clip though, so you need to make sure that you're doing it safely without risk of being shot at by other enemies that could be protecting your target's backside. So this first game here, um, kind of reinforcing my mentality of scout first. Not a lot of damage going to be done this game, but I will do an awful lot of spotting here on Siegfried line, going to the west side of the map in the open field, uh, which is where I like to take my light tanks, and the AMX 1390 is no different. So my crew is trained in Brothers in Arms, and it mounts uh, coated optics as well as improved ventilation, so I'm sporting a really good view range about, of about 460 meters, if I remember correctly. Not a bad view range at all, so... Uh, the plan is to push forward in the field, see if anybody is down there, spot for my fellows in the artillery, the light tank, and the medium tank behind me, and they can try and just, you know, take some snipe shots and help me rack up some assisted damage, which would get me a, quite a good amount of XP in a game such as this. Bottom tier, a couple of tier 10s on both teams, quite a few tier 9s, and most of my platoon is playing tier 9s themselves, so I have to be cautious as a, uh, a couple of these tanks could really, really cripple me in one or two shots for sure, looking at about 500 alpha damage, roughly. So pulling forward, I come across one of the enemy scout tanks, a T-49 in front of me, spotting me for an enemy T-28 on the far right, who is just trundling up to the, the road leading into the middle of Siegfried line. Uh, inching forward, uh, seeing that the T-49 ducked behind the bunker and can no longer spot me as he has an object in the way, I inch forward and I spot the enemy 57 heavy, trying to swoop around and get some more targets lit up there for my teammates behind me, and I managed to spot the other enemy scout, an, en an enemy AMX 1390, as well as an unidentified heavy tank that I wasn't able to quite tell what it was. 1390 goes completely ham and absolutely tries to chase me down. And that's when my platoon mates behind me decide to ambush him, and we take him out of the game really quickly. Joe the Frogman managing to snipe him from a really far distance with his Lorraine. Uh, unfortunately, Casual Pie and his T-49 got spotted by the 1390 and gets taken out by the enemy artillery, as that is a common thing. You'll find that's a common thing when you're playing light tanks these days. I think it's just because artillery players are sick of the YOLO Suicide Scout idiots, who simply, they just zip in past the entire enemy team and essentially sacrifice themselves just to kill one or two enemy artillery, which is, in my strong opinion, an extremely dumb thing to do right at the start of a game as it takes your availability and your tank's versatility out of the game before you've even really done anything. But I'm pretty sure that it's the maneuvers like that that are really pissing off artillery players, and that's why artillery is... Uh, you'll see a lot of artillery shooting at light tanks. Uh, so if you're in your AMX 1390 and you're spotted, assume that artillery is attempting to line up a shot on you. So pulling forward, we finished our finished our reload here. Uh, tried a blind shot on the T57 heavy since he was one shot, but I figured he was probably long gone from that location by now. Uh, but pulling forward, and I'm able, I'm able to spot him one more time. Just trying to aim in on him a little bit while dodging his shots. Uh, long range auto lock and trigger pull. First one bounces, second one tracks him, and United Combat's able to finish him off in the back there. Unfortunately, I took a nasty hit from either the IS-7 or the T-54 medium tank on the far right by the ramp leading up into the city. So I am essentially on life support at 128 hit points by this point in the game. So... Anything, any shot hitting me whatsoever, especially that enemy T-49 scout tank's derp gun, uh, will very easily take me out. So uh, I decided to put my man pants on and start playing a lot more cautiously. I, I want to keep myself alive as this tank is a very dangerous adversary in the late stages of a game, especially with a full drum loaded when there's you know only five tanks per side cruising around and everybody's heavily damaged this thing can easily swoop in 
and really unbalance the odds by taking out two or three tanks very swiftly with its six round uh, six round autoloader drum. So I decided to stay put. Uh, UC said he was going to pull up and uh, help me out here in his T-54, so he is pulling up behind me. Uh, doesn't really want to quite push on the T uh, T-49 just yet, as there could very well still be a heavy tank or two in the very back uh, supporting it. So I simply kept the T-54 lit up and waited for mistaken ID in the artillery to take him out, allowing us to uh, creep up on this T-49 who doesn't have an extra set of eyes watching for us in the field. So uh, both UC and myself decide it's time to push up on the T-49. T-49 takes a shot at UC and tracks him, so I, I decide this is my time to move in as he's pulled back behind the bunker to try and complete his reload. And now he is spotting me the whole way up, so I'm trying to keep a wary eye just in case there's some more, uh, some more campers in the very back of the field there. Uh, just in case. You can't be too careful. So pulling out, I simply auto-lock. I fully expected to die, but thankfully the T-49 missed his shot. Um, although I am missing mine as well. So uh, got two or three damaging hits on him, and I figured he's about to reload, so I need to pull away before he tries to plant a shot on me. But thankfully my platoon mate in United Combat comes in and s saves my day by taking out that T-49 once and for all making him no longer a problem for us or, or a, another set of eyes for the two enemy artillery on the team. So pulling forward, UC goes all in on the enemy M5355 on the first one, goes in to take him out. I'm still on a reload, so there's not much I can do aside from try and just spot these two artillery pieces. And thankfully, our Death Star comes over the hill and takes out the second enemy piece of artillery. So a uh, bit, bit of a win. Didn't really do much there, especially in terms of damage. Only a couple penetrating and damaging hits. 668 total damage dealt, but 3,331 assisted damage. All spotter damage from uh, lighting up targets in the field there for both my platoon mates as well as some of the friendly teammates that uh, initially pushed towards the town area of Siegfried Line. Not a bad game whatsoever. Uh, good game showcasing my mentality of scout first with the AMX 1390. And this second game here on Lakeville, uh, quite a bit longer than the previous one. Uh, it kind of came down to some, uh, to some clutch maneuvers here, especially at the very end. Uh, once again, another tier 10 game, as is common with the AMX 1390. And my friends are mostly in tier 9 tanks. We've got Cafe Colombiano and a Wheezy 111 1 1-4 Chinese tier 9 heavy. Jota Frogman in a Lorraine Tier 9 French Medium. Uh, Mistaken ID in her German E50 Tier 9 Medium Tank. And Rhymes with Noobs in the AMX Chaffee Tier 6 Premium French Scout Tank. So, on Lakeville, you gotta do what a scout is supposed to do at the very start of a game on Lakeville. You pull down this lake road and you light up some targets. Now, you d definitely don't want to do this if you don't have a very well trained crew, especially with a skill like camouflage or even without a camo net. Um, because in a situation like this, that Leopard 1 would very likely have spotted me, even from that far away, uh, or any other of these, uh, any of these other tier 10s for that matter. Uh, the E3 could very well spot me, especially if he has Binox and he sits still and lets his Binox kick in, but I'm just getting some initial detections here, uh, giving the guys going to town an idea of what's happening in town and, that's when we turn around and we notice Rhymes with Noobs kind of had a dirt moment and decided to go for a swim. And uh, in the midst of my taunting, I got spotted by the T-49 that uh, pushed the lake road for their side of the team. Unfortunately for him, he came quite late and he's not going to get any spots on my teammates pushing into the hill. So I got a shot right into his turret. My tracks eat his shot. One shot into his commander's hatch makes him back up just enough for my platoon mates to snipe him from the city and take him out of the game, and that gets rid of the enemy team's eyes for me, allowing me much more maneuverability to scoot around up here on the on the lake road of Lakeville. Even with my moving and me not being spotted, there's still some blind firing happening in, in my direction of the map here, so uh, just keeping the E3 lit up. Uh, our artil artillery's already dead, so unfortunately uh, I can't count on the artillery uh, hitting that T110 E3, to try and get some damage on him before he rolls into town. But uh, I decided that I'm not really doing much good here. There's nobody's here to take these shots on the enemies that I'm spotting. 
So I turn around, seeing that the valley is actually struggling a little bit. So I start a reload and start pulling back uh, towards the valley initially there. But upon seeing the Fosh heading that way, I decide they probably don't need my help over there right away. Uh, you know, the the Fosh heading in that direction will definitely even the odds for our our team in the valley there, as the enemy only appears to have sent three tanks down that way, which is fine. Uh, definitely don't need to commit a, a large force to the valley on Lakeville as the city area is much more important. Controlling the city lets you control a good two-thirds of the map, definitely, especially down that lake road and through the rest of the town area. So pulling forward, regrouping with Joe Frogman and Mistaken ID, both here in the town, uh, Cafe Colombiano, uh, heading back kind of towards, uh, towards the lake road, uh, back towards our base, so I'm just I'm just kind of cruising, getting getting an idea for what's going on uh, in this situation here, and uh, you know checking the map, we realize oh there's actually quite quite a lot more of them in the valley than we initially anticipated. So we all turn around uh, and start heading back that way. Joe, mistaken, and myself, and Cafe Colombiano heads down the lake road to try and get some supporting shots into all the enemy tanks that are pushing pushing the town there. But seeing that the valley looks to be in some pretty serious trouble as uh, several of our tanks are on, are on life support and uh, they are somewhat outnumbered, uh, the three of us decided to turn around and make a difference in this part of this part of the map here. So up until right about now, not a heck of a lot happening in this game, almost four minutes in and I've hardly done anything. So uh, at this point, it's, it's really it's a really good moment to make the AMX 1390 really shine. So pulling forward either by drawing the STI to turn towards me and uh, turn his turret away from my friendlies, you know, supporting the team there, or just trying to take him out in the back. But unfortunately, um, I didn't really get my crap together until this final shot here where I finally took out the STI uh, with a shot into his backside. Finally taking him out once I realized I'm an idiot and I should have shot here in the first place. Uh, sometimes that happens, though. Two of those bounces were a result of, of the really poor gun handling. If uh, if you don't sit still and aim long enough, you know, you could very well miss your shot uh, with, the, with the round not going where you want it to because... Like I said, this thing has this thing has very bad gun handling. The aim time is is really really poor, at at a three second aim time rating, and the on the move dispersion values are just really bad. So in a situation like that, had I taken my time, simply lined up my first you know one or two shots, that STI I could have been taken on a lot more a lot more quickly, uh, for sure there, and I wouldn't have bounced so many shots. So normally in a situation like that, I would turn around and actually push back down either the lake road or go all the way back into town to support the rest of the team. But uh, I decided to push forward to see if there was anybody else in the valley, and if not, I'd be able to flank behind them and either possibly take out artillery, which I just did there with some help from Cafe Colombiano on the lake road, uh, or flank around behind the rest of their team and see if I could get some shots into their rear armor. So on seeing the STI, I knew the Conqueror is somewhere over there by the by the second enemy STI as well. So before I spotted him, I decided I need to find some hard cover if I'm going to start shooting at these guys. So I came up behind this house here, decided not to shoot the STI. He's uh, too well angled and too well armored. So on seeing some side shots on the Conqueror, I get one shot in. Second shot in go, goes through dropping the Conqueror down to a one-shot. He's basically on life support. Any of my teammates can finish him off. And Cafe Colombiano seals the deal with a nice long-range shot with his Chinese heavy tank. And the E3, upon seeing me spotted, decided to turn around, and he's going to put some pressure on me by coming towards me. So I decided I need to push into town now and uh, deal with the enemy scout tank and the other heavy tank that is in town that is currently isolated. I still have three shots of the drum, so I just go for it, narrowly dodging a shot from the T110E3. It looks like I jumped over his his shot and his, as his round went underneath my tracks almost. So coming up on the enemy IS-8, I'm not fully reloaded, so I need to make these shots count. So I just hold fire up until I get right behind him, shooting him in his very weak rear armor. Uh, luckily for me, my teammate was able to finish him off, allowing me two more shots to take out the enemy M41 Walker Bulldog Scout Tank, narrowly avoiding 
getting killed myself there by the M41 Walker Bulldog as he could have very very well caught me on a full reload and I would just be defenseless for about 40 seconds there. So Erin pulls forward in her E50 trying to put some pressure on the enemy STI. Uh, currently the E3 is undetected so I decided okay I'm on a reload but I need to make myself useful so I decided to pull forward see if I can spot this uh, T110 E3 make sure he's not flanking uh, the rest of my teammates and coming out of town we still see him just on the outskirts of the of the buildings here he's still not in a position to shoot my teammates thankfully so somebody gets a nice shot on him probably Kathy from the lake road so I decided I'm gonna need to put some shots in his back uh, jumped the gun there shot went way high hitting the building there so I decided I'm gonna get outside of proxy spotting range of this T110 E3 and I'm gonna pull behind him time my shots right and just you know wait for them to be well aimed in so coming out I simply auto lock wait for the aimer to shrink a lot and then that's when I just start planting shots into his engine deck trying to either disable his engine or just do enough damage to finish him off emptying the drum in the back of the E3 I managed to take him out his final 160 hit points are are gone and that takes out easily the the most dangerous tank of this game for sure STI comes whipping around, plants a nice shot into me, dropping me down to a one shot. I have barely 250 hit points, and a mistaken ID is also a one shot for the STI. Now, I'm still on a reload at this point, but I know that I can at the very least uh, be a distracting force for the STI and either keep him in the town to give Cafe Colombiano enough time to come in and support us with his heavy tank. Uh, but he manages to chase down mistaken ID and finish her off here. I tried to tried to do what I could to distract him. Mistaken ID gets a nice tracking shot on him, holding him in place. Our heavy tank tries sniping him, but he bounces, unfortunately, leaving me and Caffey to try and finish the job right after he takes out our other platoon mates. So pretty intense game there. That STI and E3 could have very well clutched that for them uh, if we didn't coordinate as well as we had in the town there. So a much more damaging game that time, 2,933 damage, 1,599 assisted damage through spotting as well as tracking enemies. So uh, very interesting game there. Less of a scout first mentality that game, um, but that kind of just goes to show how much damage you can do with the 1,390. It's a very dangerous tank, especially in the later stages of a game when there's a lot of uh, when there's a lot less tanks to protect the flanks and rears of friendlies. Anyways, that's a look at the AMX 1390, folks. Hope you enjoyed this edition of Tank Talk. I strongly recommend keeping this tank or going back to get another 200,000 XP on it for when the new French mediums come out, the AMX 30 prototype and the AMX 30B. For the time being, this has been Mobius Y. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good night.